right, I want to welcome everybody that's joining us now, live streaming by TV, by radio, wherever you're coming into our service from today. If you're listening by radio, you can go to www.theshepherdshouse.net and get the entire program. Our radio program's about 30 minutes in length, and our TV and live streaming's about uh, an hour in length. We've got a guest preacher uh, today from Scottsville, Kentucky, uh, Brother Keith Patrick, and he attends the East Willow Street Church of God, and his dad, Brother Danny Patrick's the pastor there, been a good friend of mine, and we're honored to have him come and to preach the Word of God today. Let's give him and the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Love you, brother. <laughs> Amen. Do you love your pastor? Give Brother Jimmy Wilson and the Lord Jesus a great big hand. I appreciate Brother Jimmy. Uh, for those of you that came and visited with us uh, a few weeks back uh, when he came and preached at East Willa, he done a phenomenal job. He preached about that rooster. And Sister Jenny, we, uh, we enjoyed that so very much and appreciate your pastor so much. And he, we're thankful for him thankful for his wife, thankful for this church and the love that you've showed. I've seen you come and support him many times uh, during revivals that I've seen him go out to preach and, and that bus be there with him. And that shows uh, some phenomenal things. And I appreciate uh, the love you have for your pastor. I appreciate the work that you're doing in Africa. Uh, I, I've, I've got some very close ties, very close to that. Uh, they're not se they're separate churches, but they're very close in that same area. And I can tell you that everything that he's talking about, uh, I've been over there four different times, and everything he's telling you is so true. Uh, there's such a great need. There's such uh, poverty there, but the spirit of the, they're rich with Jesus, let me just tell you. They don't like there. The material things is where uh, that, that it's hard to come by. But, you know, God sends churches like this. For every bake sale you had, uh, it's worth it. I'm telling you, there is a child that's very thankful, very thankful for what you're doing for them. And I appreciate the work that you're doing. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be able to come and, and be with you. My wife teaches Sunday school. We believe in faithfulness uh, and, and to your position that you hold at church. So that's why she's not with me today on Sunday mornings. She doesn't usually travel a lot with me because I believe if you have a job, you need to do that job. But I was a little surprised. Normally, she outranks me when it comes to the kids. And I was walking out the door, and Deborah looked at me and said, well, where are you going, Dad? I said, well, I'm going to preach for Brother Jimmy. And uh, she said, well, okay. And so I walked out the door. Next thing I know, she leans out and said, hold on, I'm going with you. And I said, well which they always accuse her of being my favorite, but I love them all the same. But one Thanksgiving, uh, <laughs> I was given uh, my thankful testimony, and I, I was trying to talk about all my kids, and she was the first one that I said. I said, I'm thankful for Deborah, and I started crying. So now all my kids, that's what they tell me all the time. They say, well, you're thankful for Deborah. I couldn't get no more out, Brother Jimmy, but it wasn't just that I was thankful for her. I couldn't, I couldn't say anymore. I got to crying, and so they give me a hard time about that. But Debbie, will you stand up so they can see you? Come on, stand up there for them. Yeah. This is my youngest daughter, uh, Miss Deborah Patrick. I named her after my mom. I'm thankful to have her with me today. And just honored to be here. We're just going to do what God called us to do. And just preach what God give us this morning. And it's along very much <clears throat> with everything. What brother? I thought Brother Jimmy could have just went ahead and preached. That had been all right with me. It was very on time. And these kids, if that didn't touch you, I'm like Brother Jimmy. I don't. I I was just uh, blessed. And I liked. I I, I seen uh, the faces that they had and the love that they were showing. And if that was your kid and they held up, I'm thankful for my daddy. And, man, you know that's got to make you feel good. And if I, you, they said, I'm thankful for my mama, I'm thankful. Man, that's one. Whoever put that together, you done a, you knocked a home. That's a grand slam. That ain't a home run. That's a grand slam. And uh, I appreciate you kids for doing that. And what a blessing it is to teach gratitude. And uh, we've got to teach them that. And I, I just love that. Their faces, 
And just what a blessing. I've been blessed already to be here. I'm going to be reading out of the book of Luke today, chapter 17. The book of Luke, chapter 17, will begin with the 11th verse. Luke 17 and 11. <clears throat> Thank you for everybody who cooked. I will do my best to not disappoint. I'll eat as much as I can, I can guarantee you that. But thank you for all that, that worked hard, and I know how that is. Luke chapter 17 and verse 11. If you there, say amen. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus... Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell, listen to this, and he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found they, that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you, God, for the shepherd's house and Pastor Jimmy. Lord, I pray that, God, you give them a special blessing, Lord. God, on this day of thanksgiving, Lord, that we glorify you. Father, I pray that, God, in this season, Lord, we'll be thankful that, Lord, no matter what, you've always provided. And God, we just ask that, Lord, you'd visit us this way. God, your spirit would come down like only you can send it. There be lost among us. Let them not leave here lost. There be sick. Let them be healed. God will give you glory for everything that takes place. We ask it all in your holy and precious name. And that is the precious name of Jesus. And everyone would say amen. And I would say amen. I want to preach one out of ten. One out of ten. The Bible said that Jesus seen these lepers come that way and they they seen the 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 Savior. They seen Jesus and it said they begin to cry afar off. They stood afar off. Lepers weren't uh, able to get close to people. They were uh, uh, they were an outcast, so they weren't able to get around. So they knew uh, uh, they didn't realize the the. Uh, the Savior that we knew because Jesus didn't worry about that. In one scripture it says that he touched a man with leprosy. That was just shouldn't happen. But you see, leprosy can't do anything to Jesus. Amen. But they knew one thing when they seen him afar off. They knew to raise up their voice and who to look for for help. They knew who to call on. It says they lifted up their voices. Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. Amen. In the day that we live, amen, there are so many that know to go to the church. They know to who their answer is. They know that who should they call on. Uh, it's not very hard to find that people will... Uh, uh, Come to the church house, whether people are here or whether they ain't, looking for help in the day that we live. Amen. But so many times, even when the help is given, how much gratitude is actually given to that which, given the, what, which was given to them? Amen. How much thankfulness do we have? I was so thankful to see these children, how they said they were thankful for their parents, how they were thankful for their church, how they were thankful for the things that God has placed in their lives. Amen. You know there's a, a attitude of ungratitude in the day that we live. People aren't thankful anymore. Amen. I'll tell you that just a few years ago, amen, there was everybody going to their mailboxes and, and they were receiving checks out of them and I, I'm not really I'll just stay neutral on that. I don't want to offend nobody. I'm not trying to get political, but nevertheless, a lot of what we're seeing and what we went through is a result of when you give out free money. Amen. But in the time that we lived, amen, and they 
shut the businesses down as I said I'm not getting into the political thing of it amen but nevertheless amen there's never been a time that that much money was given out uh, uh, to the country like that amen I'm talking about billions of dollars just sent to the mailbox amen and people that didn't do anything to earn that amen was able to be partakers in that amen and I've seen uh, uh, young boys you think about this young boys amen that, that go and their parents buy them a truck Amen, and that truck is nice, boy, it's shiny. Amen, and that boy uh, didn't do anything to earn that truck. He didn't do anything to deserve that truck. Amen, and the next thing you know, Brother Jimmy, he's got that truck out in the middle of a cornfield somewhere, and he's got the wheels buried deep in a mud pit. Amen, he's burnt out to transmission. Amen, blow to head gasket. Amen, and you know what he does? He's, well, I, I'm not worried. You know why? There ain't a whole lot invested in that thing. Amen, you know, my dad used to tell me, amen, when we'd go through town, amen, he'd see somebody, man, they'd lay down on that rubber. They'd be, Wee-k! amen, squealing them tires through town. Amen, you know what he'd say to me? He'd say, when that boy starts having to pay for them tires, amen, he won't be squealing out on every parking lot that he sees. You know why? Amen, there's a thankfulness and a gratitude, amen, that comes along when you've worked and earned something, when you've paid for for something. Amen. There's a thankfulness there. Amen. You wonder why some people you drive by and they're always shining up their car or they're always cleaning that front yard because they earned that brother Jimmy. Amen. And they're thankful for what they got. They're taking care of it. Amen, but you don't see a lot of that these days. That's why that so many people, amen, take for granted this country. Amen, they got something out of a mailbox they didn't even earn. Amen, I'm gonna tell you something. Amen, when COVID was going on, amen, you call uh, Brother Jimmy and ask him, call Brother Maruka and ask him if anybody from the Kenyan government, amen, sent them a check for $6,000 or $10,000. Amen, it wasn't happening overseas. It wasn't happening down in Haiti. It wasn't happening in India, amen, but we as an American, amen, we had that blessing that was given to us, and yet so many people still burning the flag, amen, so many people still hate this country, amen, I'm getting to where I'm going, but what is the attitude of thankfulness and attitude, amen, of gratefulness and humility, amen, you've got to ask yourself, why is it, amen, that so many take for granted, amen, if you're in here in this church today, or you're listening to me by the way of video, amen, and you've got godly people in your life, you've got a godly mother, you've got a godly father, amen, you ought to have an attitude of gratitude, amen, you ought to be thankful that God's given you, amen, somebody in your life to show you the right way how you reflect in this moment how God has been good to you you see these these lepers there he asked the question where are the nine where's the other nine at I want to be the one out of ten don't you listen that's what it said one out of ten came back to thank him I want to be a one out of ten Amen. I don't care what the rest of the world. Everybody that we we live in a popular uh, uh, culture. Everything is a popularity contest. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Being a Christian ain't going to be popular. You a real Christian, it won't be popular. You won't fit. You'll stick out like a sore thumb. When everybody else is cussing and drinking and doing things they shouldn't be doing, you'll stick out like a sore thumb, brother. Amen. I want to be the one out of ten, don't you? I want to be the one out of ten that doesn't just look at everything that I have and think that I got it by my own self. I want to be the one out of ten that said, God, it was you that gave me the breath this morning when I woke up God it was you that gave me the strength and the knowledge amen to do that job on my job like I do God it was you that gave me that promotion God it was you that landed me that job God it was you that did those things for me we constantly grumble about things and we constantly complain amen children will go into a store man they'll throw a fit on their mom and dad, amen, about how kind, how, what kind of toy they want, what kind of clothes and, uh, they got to wear, whatever. I mean, man, it's just got to be a certain brand or they ain't going to wear it anymore. Amen, it's got to be a certain kind or they ain't going to put it on their body. Amen, they've become too good. Amen, when our grandmas and grandpas, amen, you wonder, sometimes I see things that are going on and I'm just 
scratching my head, Brother Jimmy. Amen. Now anymore. Amen. Used to grandma and grandpa whenever they, they had a uh, blue jeans, Brother Jimmy, that you would see they would have patches on the inside of them. Amen. It's because they wore them out working them tobacco fields and working them corn crops. Amen. And working all the hauling hay and everything else. Amen. And they doing just the daily chores of chopping wood. They'd burn a rub a hole in those blue jeans. Amen. And they'd put a patch in there so they could stretch them out. Amen. A little bit longer. But now amen. Kids go to the store and they want to buy blue jeans with holes in them. I don't understand that. Look. Hey listen. Amen, I can take you to Walmart, buy you a $10 pair of Wranglers. Amen, go home, do some shotgun practice, and I'll turn around and sell them to you for 60 bucks. Same effect. You know it. Amen, you know what it is? It looks like somebody hung them on a clothesline. Amen, and shot them with a shotgun. That's just what it looks like. Amen, but that's what the style is. Amen, sometimes I wonder if it's style or if I ain't want to show off them legs a little bit. Amen, but I can tell you nevertheless, amen, grandma and grandpa were thankful for a whole pair of jeans. They were thankful for a pair of jeans that served the purpose amen of what jeans were made for. Amen. Grandma and grandpa amen liked to do the things amen that were practical. Amen. But in the day that we live we live in anything but practicality. Amen. Folks will buy a brand new car amen take off a $2,000 set of wheels. Amen. Sell them to somebody and put a $5,000 set of wheels. Now I'm not trying to bust your bubble. I'm just going somewhere with this. When grandma Grandma and grandpa were growing up, they'd just be thankful to have a set of wheels. Amen, but we live in a day, amen, of ungratitude. Amen, we've got more than any other generation, amen, that's ever walked the face of the earth. Amen, you've got a meal at your hands in a microwave in a matter of seconds. Amen, we've got more things, amen, than any other generation, amen, that's ever lived on this earth, but we do more complaining than any other generation that's ever been. The church has to be the one out of ten. Amen. You see, I see that God blessed them all. All ten of them were blessed to receive that blessing, weren't they? He had said they all went, Sister Frida. Amen. They all received the blessing. They did. Every one of them. They went to the priest. They went there. He said, show yourself to the priest. They went their way and they were cleansed. Amen. I said this. I said ten were cleansed, but only one was made whole. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. Ten of them got the cleansing, but only one of them was made whole. Amen. Let me tell you, there's a lot of folks that are doing good. Amen. There's some folks that's been clean off of drugs. Amen. There's a lot of folks that's done a lot of things that God's blessed them with. Amen. Put people in their lives that they could see the light. Amen. But yet they glorified in on them their own selves. Amen. There are a lot of people that have been cleansed. Amen. But have you been made whole? Amen. There's a difference, folks. Amen. Because when you're the one out of ten, Amen. You might have been cleansed, but you'll realize, amen, you didn't do it by your own might. Amen. You would get cleansed. Amen. You'll realize that there was something working under the undercurrent. Amen. As Brother Undertow, as Brother Jeremy Wilson preached at our church the other night, done a phenomenal job. Amen. Brother, there's something going on that you can't see. Amen. That helped you to get to where you're at today. Amen. And when you realize that, when you realize there's a God that loves you and every step that you've ever took. Amen. He's been there and offered you an opportunity. Amen. For the good things in life, you'll realize and be one of the ten. One out of ten. That says, you know what, God? I know it was you. I wouldn't be here had it not been for you. But it takes humility to get there. And we live in a world that humility is not much to be found. Amen. We, you, you look and people are so filled with vain uh, riches and vain uh, the movie stars the vain popularity the fame the, the money all of the things sister cookie that this world has to offer and it's everywhere you can look at it I mean you, why, do, why do men spend millions and millions of dollars to get into an office that only pays I think maybe 450,000 a year I, I can't remember forgive me for that if I'm wrong as the president of the United States but they'll spend, now how much sense does that make? To spend millions of dollars to get a job that only pays half of what, not even a quarter of what you're spending, no, not even, not even close to that, of what you're spending. Now what does that, it, you know what it boils down to? Power. They want power. 
Amen. Because men are willing to do anything for power. So there's not a lot of humility left in the day that we live. People will walk all over you to climb that ladder of success. They'll do anything they can to put themselves above. Amen. Humility's not that. Amen. Humility will help you. It'll unlock your ability that God has given you. God's looking for some humble hearts. Amen. And when we realize that God doesn't owe us anything, Brother Jimmy, that's when we'll begin to be as humble as we could ever. Listen, everything that you got today, I want you to look around. If you got your family with you, look at your beautiful wife. Look at your handsome husband. Look at them beautiful children. They're here with you, or if they're not, if you, you know where they're at, I want you to think on them. Everything you got, God give that to you. You realize that? Amen. And he don't owe you a thing. Understand that. He don't owe me nothing, Brother Jimmy. Amen. He didn't owe me when I was born in August 11th in 1978. Amen. He didn't owe me anything. Amen. Sister Jenny, he didn't owe me a thing. Amen. He was the very one that gave me an opportunity to live life. Amen. The Bible said in the book of James, let me get, to, get turn over real quick and I'll just read. I'm better at reading. I am quote. Amen. The book of James 1 and 17, it says every good gift and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father Father of lights, which is whom is no variableness, neither shadow or overturning. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above. Amen. Now, good and perfect, my mom would probably agree. My dad, maybe not so much. He might say he's good, perfect, absolutely not. Amen. But my mom, I was a mama's boy. Amen. She would definitely say, oh, he's, I was the favorite in that bunch. Amen. I, they, they still tell me that too, Deborah. Amen. But I can tell you, amen that as that perfect and good gift is given amen whether it be your child amen whether it be your spouse whether it be the grandparents you have amen whether it be that house that you have amen maybe your house ain't perfect and maybe it ain't like the one down at the end of the subdivision amen but you know what the difference in that house and the one you're living in that's your house that's their house be thankful for the one that God give you amen because there's somebody out there that ain't got no house at all Amen, there's some things, amen, that we've just got to look at and say, God, you give it to me, I'm gonna make the best of it. I'm gonna make the best of it. Amen, I know my wife's had to look at me a few times and say that, Lord, you give him to me, I'm gonna just try to make the best of him. I'm twice the man I was when she, she married me. I gained about a hundred and something pounds, but my wife, Brother Jimmy, can cook too. Amen, I mean, she can flat cook. Hey man, I, I used to, when we dated, I used to tell her, I said, I worked out all the time. I was in the gym, Brother Jimmy, all the time. I, one day I was flexing. I said, you ain't going to mind if I become a bodybuilder. And she said, no, I don't guess. I, I, I mean, we was just, she just dating. She wasn't but 18 years old and I was 19. I said, you wouldn't care if I become a bodybuilder? Boy, I missed that boat by a long shot. Hey Amen. But uh, I'm a bodybuilder, all right. I'm building a tank. <laughs> but I can tell you, hey amen, she's thankful for me. Hey amen, she's thankful for me. You understand? Hey amen, every good and perfect gift. If you've got a spouse that loves you, hey amen, that's willing to sacrifice for you, that's willing to put up with you, you ought to be thankful for that. Hey amen, but you know what we've got in the world that we live in, Brother Jimmy? Hey amen, we get on Facebook or we get on Instagram or we get on Snapchat and we compare our spouses, amen, to some fantasy out there in the world that ain't true. They ain't the one picking up your dirty socks. Amen. They ain't the one preparing your meal. They ain't the one hearing you cry. They ain't the one that was there with you. Amen. Turn that hogwash off and be thankful for that spouse that God gave you. Amen. That, you know, the thing is, hey amen, be thankful because there's somebody out there, hey amen, that their spouse is no longer with them. There's somebody out there that wish God would just send somebody their way, hey amen, to be a faithful. They've been hurt and scarred deeply. Hey amen, they've been cheated on. They've been lied to. Hey amen, that's a bad way to be. 
Hey man, there's a lot of people that do that. There's a lot of wolves out there. Hey man, I try to tell my daughters that all the time. Be careful. Hey man, not everybody that loves says they love you going to actually love you. Hey man, there's some people with ulterior motives. Hey man, they wolves. Hey man, and I'm gonna tell you something. I try to be a, a, a tough shepherd. My oldest daughter Mallory the other day. I'm telling it all, ain't I? Boy, they she come in the other day. She said, "Dad, ain't nobody ever going to be good enough for me." I said, "Now you're getting it." honey that's exactly right hey man you know why cause God gave them to me that's the jewels that God gave to me hey man those four Danny, Mallory, Deborah and Drake those are the ones that God entrusted in me and if you think I'm gonna let a wolf in the pen hey man you got another thing coming hey man if he gets there he'll have to go in another way cause he ain't coming through the gatekeeper I tell you that Hey Amen, I'm going to be a father to my children. Hey Amen, I'm thankful for what he gave me. I'm thankful for the gifts that he gave me. I'm thankful for the job that I got. Even though sometimes it don't always suit my fancy, there's times I've had to miss things. Hey Amen, but you know what? I've always kept the lights on. We've always kept the bills paid. Be a lot of times there's easier ways out. I've seen other dads go and they would, uh, you know, one take a, a, a loss or whatever of, a, 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 you know, hours on the job and stuff, and they'd go to events and things. And I, I'm, I don't encourage that. If you can make them, I believe you should make them. But at some point in your life, if you're the man of the house, you need to be the man of the house and go pay the bills. Amen. It doesn't mean we get to go play all the games. Amen. I've been very blessed with a great wife that's been able to do a lot of those things. She picks them up from practice and she drops them off. She was the first face they'd always see when they got off the school bus. Amen. And I missed a lot of those things. I'm trying to make up for some. Amen. But at the end of the day, I also kept all the food on the table. Amen. And you ought to be thankful for that job. Yes, there's some things that somebody else might have a what looks to be a better job, but you don't know the headache they carry home every night neither. Amen. I liked what old, uh, I can't remember. It may have been Martin Luther King. I can't remember which one said it now. I went blank. Amen. But he said, if I'm, God puts me in as a dishwasher, I want to be the best dishwasher they've ever had back there. I want to do every job to the fullest of my capacity. Amen. Not because of what they deserve. Amen. But because God placed me in that place. Amen. To be a shining light and example of what his glory and his grace will do. Amen. If I'm going to be a delivery driver, let me be the best that I can. I want to be one out of ten. How about you today? What, where do you want to land? Do you want to be a one out of ten? Knowing that, knows that you're thankful for a pastor that will get up in the church and preach you the word every Sunday, every Sunday night, Wednesday night, whenever he's preaching, whether it's revival. Be thankful for that man of God over there. Be thankful for the shepherd house. Being thankful for your church and your pastor. Because in the end, you'll realize you didn't get where you're at alone. There were family, friends. There's a lot of people that's been there to help you get where you're at. Most importantly, God Almighty, through His Son, Jesus Christ. But be thankful. Don't ever take for granted a good man of God that'll stand up in a pulpit. There's a lot of folks that, that give you the easy path. There's a lot of folks that won't preach you the truth. The truth ain't always good. Sometimes the truth hurts. You ever heard that? But the truth will also, what? Set you free. And I have found in my life, I want people that will be real with me. I don't want people that will be fake and tell me what I want to hear. I want to be, I, I'll give you a small example, maybe a little soft. But if I put a, if I put a outfit on, we can go a little deeper if we have to, but I think you'll get it, the, the point of it. Brother Jimmy, I don't have the best taste buds in the world. If, if I put a shirt on, I mean, man, it, it could be the ugliest thing there is with a pair of khakis and some shoes, and I can go to church, and everybody's like, Woo, what are you, man, I like that. I, I like, and I hope they're telling the truth. I hope they are. Or I can go to a ball and, man, I like that. That looks good. But you know who will definitely tell me the truth? Anybody want to answer it? My wife. That's exactly right. 
she'll be like, what, what have you got on? I've been, I've been going to preach somewhere, and I'd put a tie on that did not match the suit, nor the shirt, nor nothing. I mean, I thought it looked good when I walked out the door. But I get there, and she said, you look awful. I mean, your outfit looks terrible. You don't match. You, you know what she is? She's a truth speaker in my life. And you need to find those people in your life and be thankful for them. You may, they may hurt your feelings sometimes. And they might not tell you everything you want to hear. But those truth speakers will keep you from looking like a fool. Those truth speakers will keep you out of jail. Those truth speakers will keep you out of hell. You hear me? They'll keep you out of the bad things in life that can happen to us. When you find people that are in your life that are willing to tell you the truth no matter if you like it or if you don't like it. That's the people you know that care about you the most. That's the people I want in my life. Now, my daddy stepped on my toes many times. I have about made financial decisions, and he'd say, Son, you don't need to do that. Man, I remember I, was, I told this last Sunday. I, I, me and I, when I graduated, I wanted to buy me a, a Pontiac Trans Am. And I was just a young boy. I was, you know, and I could see my wife. And me, I'd have them T-tops down and her hair whipping in the wind and me just cruising through. Brother Jimmy, I could see it. I could see it. And that car salesman, he was telling me, man, he was like, let me tell you something. I can see you driving this thing. Man, you look good in that. You will look great in that. And I thought, yeah, and that, that uh, commission looked good in your pocket too. Amen. But when I went home, I called my dad and I, and I, I said, what do you think? Or I went home. I, I, didn't, I didn't have a cell phone at the time. I, I, let me back up and tell that. I went home, and I, I told my dad, I said, Dad, I'm I looking at this car. I want to know what you think. I want to buy this Pontiac Trans Am. And he said, I think you're crazy. And I said, what do you mean? I said, man, that thing has got this, this, and this, and this. I can afford it, Dad. I'm. He said, son, you're crazy. You got a car out there. It's a 92 Pontiac Sunbird, and it, wasn't, it, it didn't have a catalytic converter on it. And it'd go through town. It sounded like it was dueled out. Everybody knew I was coming when I was coming. I couldn't hide. I couldn't sneak in late at night. I couldn't do anything. It ruined me. I mean, you come down the driveway and that thing. Daddy said, Debbie, the key's home. But I, I, I asked him what he thought. And he said, I wouldn't do it, son. He said, you're going to financially strap yourself for the next five years over a car. In five years' time, you you probably want a new one or it could tear up. And then what are you going to do? He said, you don't know what decisions you're going to make. And uh, so I, I, I listened to him. And I'm thankful for that. Because in that next five years, I ended up having two kids and having to buy a house. And if I'd have had that other day, boy, it sure would have been tough. But I had a truth speaker in my life. I'm thankful for that, Brother Jimmy. Ain't you thankful for those people that will tell you the truth? And I'm going to tell you what you got in your pastor and his wife. You got a truth speaker. Now on Sunday morning when he comes in here and maybe he steps on your toes a little bit and he preaches something maybe you don't line up with exactly right, instead of getting mad at him and going and talking about him in front of your whole family, won't you go home and pray about it? You hear me? Won't you pray about it? Won't you seek the word of God about it? Because I found that any time I prayed about it, God will always say, hey, man, sometimes you got to humble yourself and realize you wasn't right. Amen. And when God will humble you down because the man of God's sermon, I don't care who it is, amen, when that humility begins to roll in, that thankfulness begins to overflow. And when that thankfulness begins to overflow, amen, you'll get to shouting and dancing like your pastor did this morning. You know what that is a sign of? That's a sign of being free, Brother Jimmy. Amen. When you can dance around like that, amen, you know what that is? That's a free heart that can dance. Amen. A heart that's heavy don't have that dance like that. Amen, but a heart that's free and thankful and saying, God, I know you got me here. Amen, that's a heart that can say, well, glory, I'm thankful, Jesus, that you saved me. I'm thankful, God, amen, that you put people in my life, amen, to tell me the truth. I'm thankful, God, you gave me a good church to pastor. I'm thankful, God, that even in a bad time, you're still good. Hallelujah, can you say amen in here? Come on, 
one more time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'll tell you, amen, when you get a spirit of gratitude, amen, and you begin to be that one out of 10, amen, what did the Bible say? The Bible said that that one, amen, fell down on his face. He began to, with a loud voice, glorify God. And he fell down on his face, amen, and began to worship him. Amen, when you come into the house of God with an attitude of praise, and you're that one out of 10, it don't matter if everybody else is sitting around, it don't no matter who else ain't thankful, amen, you'll come in there and you'll worship him, you'll praise him, you'll thank him for all of his blessings. Every one of them, every one of them, even the hard things that's happened in our life, realize that God allowed them to happen. I don't understand why, but he allowed them to happen. Amen, sometimes we're tried by fire. Amen, to burn off the impurities in our life. I don't understand why my mom died. Amen, in 2003, I don't, under, I'm sorry, 2005, she was diagnosed in 03. Amen, in 05, she passed away. Amen, but I don't, I don't understand those things. Amen, I don't think some things are for us to understand. Understand. Amen. That's in God's time and that's in God's plan. Amen. Sister Cookie, I can't understand that. Amen. So how can you be thankful for it? Amen. Well, I'll tell you how I can be thankful for it. Amen. How can I be thankful? Amen. That God took my mother home in 2005. How can I be thankful for that? I'll tell you how I'm thankful for it. Amen. Because over 2,000 years ago, he sent his son named Jesus. Amen. That when my mom was facing cancer, amen, she didn't have to face it alone. I'm thankful amen for the cross of Calvary that said her final breath here wasn't the last time I'll ever see her. Amen. There'll be a day come amen I'll see her again. That's what I'm thankful for. I'd hate to live a life, amen, to realize and think that this is the last sister cookie, amen, that we'd ever see some of them. I'm thankful for a God, amen, that hung his head on Calvary's hill that we might have life and life more abundantly. That's how I can be thankful for that. How can I be thankful, amen, for the trials and tribulations, amen, because every good thing comes from God, that even in this hardest year, inflation is more. Brother Jimmy Wilson, I'm gonna, wow, glory. Inflation higher than it's been in 40 and 50 years. Gas going higher than it's ever been in our lifetime. But what did old Shepherd's house do? We wired $6,000 over to Kenya, East Africa. Amen, because understand this. Amen, that no matter what's going on in this world, amen, that God is still in control. Amen, his people ain't gonna have to beg. Amen, or steal for bread. That God is the one that gives all things. And that one out of 10, Brother Jimmy, ain't never gonna go hungry. Amen, that river ain't never gonna run dry. Amen, that mill barrel never go empty. Can I get an amen? And that's why you're thankful that no matter what happens in the news, don't worry, God's still in control. No matter what the news anchor is reporting, God is still in control. No matter who's in the White House, God is still in control. Amen, no matter who runs the Senate, God is still in control. No matter who runs Congress, God is still in control. No matter how high gas is, God is still in control. I wanna be that one out of 10. I want who wants to be a one out of ten in here tonight? Hey Amen. This morning, forgive me, I preach it Sunday nights. Hey Amen. A whole lot. Hey Amen. I want to be a one out of ten. I want to be a one out of ten that says, God, I ain't ashamed to shout to you. I ain't ashamed to dance to you. I ain't ashamed to praise you. I want to be a one out of ten that when everybody's grumbling on the job, I say, I'm thankful to have one. I want to be a one out of ten that when everybody's grumbling about their spouse, I'm saying, I'm thankful to have my wife. I want to be a one out of ten when they're complaining about their kids I say God I'm thankful you gave them to me I'm thankful don't you kids let me just I, thank you for nodding your head son I know you with me don't you all ever be I'm thankful for your parents or your grandparents or maybe you were adopted don't be thankful for those people that opened up that door and said you can come live with us my little sister bless her little heart <laughs> She's got five kids and another one in there that uh, asked to live with her because she'd been through foster care and foster care. And 
the devil just tried to destroy her life, her and her brother and her other sister. And Heather tried to get, him, get her a year earlier, tried to talk her into coming. And Heather had rules in her house. Heather had rules that she had to follow. And the other place that she could stay, her cousins, didn't have the rules that she had. Now, she's a good lady, but she just wasn't as thorough as Heather was. And so that led to a life of some bad decisions. And Gracie found herself on drugs and she found herself getting put in other foster homes and her body weight was decreasing she was on meth she was all kind of, and, and, and by her own testimony in one of the foster homes she was raped and uh, and not by the foster parents it was by another individual in the foster care and uh, so she hit rock bottom and she called Heather and she said Heather or she I'm sorry let me tell this right she didn't call Heather personally the child services called Heather and they said Miss Gatewood uh, we're here with Gracie and uh, she wants to come and live with you. And Heather said, can I talk to her? And Gracie said, Heather, I want to come stay with you. Heather said, Gracie, you go to this facility and you let them get, now I, I'm, I'm a firm believer the best rehab is Jesus. Okay, I understand that. And I, but I think that rehab centers have their place. They're a good place to get you grounded. And she said, you go there and you let them work with you and get that out of your system before you come in here with my little babies because Heather's got some, she's got one that's four, uh, seven, and eight. <clears throat> and so she said, before you come in here, I want to I wanna make sure you're right. And so Gracie, but she said, but I'm going to come and get you and we're going to go to church. So Gracie came to church. She prayed and that was the beginning of her turning around. So she went through that facility for almost a year. And she got clean. She started going back to school. She started doing everything that, that she was supposed to be doing. Heather would go up and see her every single weekend. She'd drive for an hour and a, almost an hour and a half to go see her and an hour and a half to come back every weekend. And she'd pick her up a lot of times and then bring her back. And then Sunday afternoon, she'd take her back because she got weekends with her and she was, they were trying to incorporate her in the house and Gracie would just come to revival and she'd pray. <clears throat> well, the day come that she was able to say good riddance to that facility. And she said, Heather, can I live with you now? And Heather said, absolutely, Gracie. So Heather went and got her, picked her up, brought her home. And uh, against all odds, this little girl that her mom, listen, understand that her mom and dad both are incarcerated. She has nobody, absolutely nobody. And uh, this little girl come to Heather's house, and Heather lives in a modest little home, and she has to share a bedroom. She's 16 years old now. She just got her permit. But she has to share a bedroom with two little bitty girls. But she's thankful for that. She don't have her own private room. She has a room that she gets to share with a seven-year-old and an eight-year-old. Now think about that. Both little girls. And uh, she's 16. And you know that out of all the things that she faced, the devil tried to destroy her. But you know what God did? God said, I'm going to give you a place and I'm going to stop you for a moment and he took her to Heather's house and he dropped her off and through that time let me tell you what's happened the statistics would say that Gracie ain't supposed to make it but you know what God says God says I'm going to clean up this little girl and I'm going to make her what she's supposed to be and you know what happened the first year this was her first year back in school at Allen County you know what happened to her 
she is now a member of the cheerleading squad. She's a pretty thing. And you know, I'll go on a step farther. This was supposed to be her senior year. But by all the records, they said that she was just a junior. But Heather said, no, you ain't going to make her graduating at, uh, no, I'm sorry, she's 17. She said, she, you ain't going to make her graduating at 20 years old or something like that. And Heather got in there and she, because she did do classes when she was in that facility up there that should make her a senior this year. But they didn't honor those credits. But we talked to the board and they said, well, if you'll do this one thing, if you pass this test, she's got enough credits. If she passes this test, that she can go. She took it the first time and she failed it. She did. So she went back uh, just a couple of weeks ago and she took it again. You had to uh, rank on this one, on at least one of the, you had to excel on at least one of the things in the ACT. My wife can explain it better than I can. But nevertheless, Brother Jimmy, she went to the altar and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed. And you know what she done on this last test, Brother Jimmy? Anybody want to guess? She passed it. And so this year in May of 2023, Gracie Jo is going to walk out of that school as a graduated senior. All because God had a plan. All because, hey amen, there was one out of ten that said, God, I'm going to thank you. Lord, I don't have a lot, but I'm going to thank you. And you know what Gracie is? She's so thankful for somebody, hey amen, that gave her a chance. Hey amen, she's so thankful that you know what she's been doing? Hey amen, she's been going out and she's been witnessing to everybody. And that same brother that was older that didn't have the chance, guess who sits in church with her every Sunday? Her brother and his wife that got saved at a revival that Gracie was singing at. Amen. You know why? Amen. Because she's thankful. Amen. And that, that, that little girl that her, her sister-in-law, amen, gave one of the, I mean, I'm talking about knock your hat in the creek testimony. Amen. She got up in the church the other day. Amen. She got to talking about what all, little Corey, what all she had been through. I was like, man, I didn't even know all that. Amen. She had had an abortion and everything. And she said, but I want to tell you something that was before I met Jesus, she said, and I know that God has forgiven me of that, and I know that I'll see that baby again one day. I thought I was going to get up and shout. I said, take that, you old slew-footed devil. Amen, what you wanted to use for bad. Amen, God's going to turn it around for good. Amen, I want to be a one out of ten that says, God, I see the destruction. That's all around me. But God, I know you're the hope that we need in this life. Amen, if they would get us a song. We're going to give an altar call. However y'all want to do it, I, I, I really enjoyed. I, I even took one of those songs and I told Debbie.